Hi everyone and welcome to And So On. My name is Lisa and today I'm going to take you through my tops, bottoms, skirts, shorts, sets that I'm going to be wearing during Me Made May. I think that covers it all. There's a lot that goes into separates. I'm gonna to have to see if I can get this all into one video, but I'm gonna try. So I'm gonna start with sets. Now, before I start, if you haven't had a chance, I'm gonna link below to the two previous videos that explain about um, what I'm wearing for Me Made May. I did have some questions about Me Made May, so let me quickly tell you what that is. Me Made May is a hashtag that was started, I don't even know when, um, for the sewing community. And it's an opportunity for you to challenge yourself, your own personal challenge, to wear your Me Maids. And whether that's, I'm gonna wear one Me Made a week, I'm going to spend one day a week wearing only me made items. I'm going to wear something me made every day, which is generally what I do. Um, or I'm going to wear everything me made. Uh, it's all about whatever your personal challenge is. And what it is, is just a way for us to challenge ourselves to wear the things that we make and also share them. So there's an Instagram hashtag, hashtag me made May. Probably this will be hashtag me made May 2020. And half the fun is seeing what other people are, have made, what other people are wearing, the outfits they put together, the fabrics. It's just a lot of fun. So I've really enjoyed it the last two years and I'm really looking forward to doing it this year because I'm in a different climate. So I'm going to start off with sets, like I said, and I'm just giving you what I have with me to wear that is me made in Spain. Because of course, we've been here for I think it's nine months now. And I only brought a fraction of my clothing with me. Some things I've made recently, some things are from before I left home. I don't know if I'm going to wear it all, but I'm going to have it all hanging up here. And so this is our guest room but right now we don't have any guests. We were supposed to have so many guests this spring. It's such a bummer, but c'est la vie. So at least I get to keep my, I call it my taller. Taller is work, work room or workshop in Spanish. So it's my taller and it's becoming my dressing room as well. So aren't I fancy? Okay, so first set. I have two that are kind of similar. So this is a top that I made that, um, I was, I had this one top by, it was actually a dress by Carolina Herrera that I loved. And if I still have the, fi the picture, I'll put it in. And I wanted to recreate that. It's sort of the first time that I wanted to try, try to figure out a way to recreate something. And I ended up using the pattern, the Georgia Peplum top by Stylark because it had this dart feature. Now the original has a peplum and I'm not a big peplum fan and it didn't fit what I was doing anyway. So a couple things, number one, I widened the neckline and I cut off the pattern here so that I could have the two the stripes going the different ways similar to the pattern. So this, I was so pleased with this when it turned, when I, when I finished it. And then in the back also has um, the, this coming down the middle. So this part is not in the original pattern. I figured that out myself. I'll link below to where I originally talked about this because I was so pleased. So this has a, an invisible zipper down the side, not fabulously matched with the stripes, but what are you gonna do? And I used the selvage, um, I think because that's all I had left to finish it off. So you'll see in a second what I'm thinking of doing with this, but um, really, really love this. This, this is um, a French cotton linen blend, I believe, from the 18 weight sale that I went to a couple of years ago, year and a half ago now. Uh, really, really love this item. And to go with it, I have these slacks. These are new look pants. I don't remember the number off the top of my head. I'm going to list it for you below. These are new look culottes. These were also a bit of an adventure in the making, but they're awesome and they fit me really, really well. I love the pockets. For a while there, they were a bit too big on me. Don't have that problem anymore. So I did have the, because they were too big, they hung down a little bit and so the crotch was a little low. And so I had turned up the waistband and now I've let the waistband down and I added a hook at the back. So these are, you know, these are my first sort of proper pants, I would say, they're not perfect. Now, here's what I was gonna say is initially these were far too long and I have a very big hem on these enough fabric that I could, if I wanted to, replace this bottom waistband. The only reason to do that is because it is a little bit short, it's a little bit cropped, which is cute with a lot of things, but I'm not sure 
I wonder if it'd be more functional with the longer, um, with, with just the slightly, slightly thicker waistband. I'm not sure yet, we'll see. But that's the only thing that needs to be done with these. I just I just mended these uh, recently. I also mended the bottom where the uh, invisible zipper was, was kind of giving me a problem. Anyway, these get a ton of wear in the summer and um, I know they'll factor in a lot. I don't actually wear them together a ton, but they look super cute together. Set number two is using the same pattern. So this is the same fabric from the, um, that I used for the Bondi dress that so many of you loved yesterday. I love it too. Um, oh, you know what? I should tell you guys, <laughs> I've got this on my face. I did not hurt myself. I have a bug bite that is itching me like you would not believe. And I find if I put a Band-Aid, then my hair and the wind doesn't like irritate it and make it itchier. So this is actually, I believe this is a Vancouver 2010 <laughs> um, Band-Aid someone gave us. Something Canadian, I can't remember. Anyway, that's what that is. Okay. This is the same pattern, um, again, with the darts. And then I just have it flat. I did a seam down the back to kind of add a little more um, interest. The only thing with this one is that somehow the way I cut this band at the bottom, because, oh, I can fix that, because the band at the bottom is self-drafted, I did it a little bit too tight. And so because of that, it rides a little bit too high. And so I'm not getting as much wear out of it. So what I might do, this also has the invisible zip down the side, not my best invisible zip, but okay, is I might do a split hem on this side and that way I just get a little more space and it hangs a little better. So I think I might do that with this because I love the fabric so much, I think it'll be really comfy. And then to go with that, I have these shorts and these shorts are the Fez pants from La Maison, La Maison Victor, which unfortunately I don't think is available online anymore. This, this pant, you might be able to find the magazine on eBay. Um, and so these are just a really simple, simple pant. If you watched my video from last week, I have, and I'll show them to you later, I have a long version of this. And for some reason, the waistband instructions on this are really weird and you end up with a very funky waistband. So either way, I need to fix the waistband. The other thing is, you can see here, let me see, is it's pulling really badly, which means I guess when I sit down, it's pulling. I don't know if maybe because I didn't use a small enough stitch length, maybe it's pulling. I don't know if any of you have any ideas. So I think what I'm going to do is just go back in and go to the inside of where that was pulling and just restitch it a little bit with a little bit of very small stitch length. I think up until recently, I was I was kind of using longer stitch lengths sort of last year. And then I realized, no, you need to use like 2.4, 2.6, ideally for construction. And crotches and bums obviously take a little more wear and tear. So it's doing the same thing in front, less so, but it is. Um, this again is a waist, is, a, is an elastic back waist. And it's not my favorite. That said, they're just a light, you know, short for summer, super comfortable. So I don't think I'm gonna change these in any real way. I'm just going to kind of mend them and make sure they last a long, long time. Okay, last set you saw very recently. So this is the top that I made, the copying a Madewell top. And where are the shorts? Where are the shorts? They go with the Pietra shorts which um, I completed just before that. So let's talk about the shorts first. Love these shorts. I was saying yesterday I'd like to, or two days ago, that I'd like to make another pair. I think I am going to, and it's gonna take a little bit of work because I'm gonna have to take out all of this top stitching here and maybe here as well. Someone suggested taking a wedge, a four centimeter wedge out of the front um, center seam because I end up with like a lot of poochy fabric at the front that I don't need. Um, and I think that might work. So these are also one size too big. When I make them again, I'm gonna, these are the 10, I'm gonna make the eight next time. But they're very comfortable. Now, regarding this top, I don't think I want the sleeves on it anymore. I'm not reaching for it. I think with the ruffle and the gathered sleeves, it's too cutesy for me. And I don't really gravitate to cutesy. So I think what I'm gonna do is take off this sleeve and I think sleeveless, let me see if I can doctor it one sec. Yeah, 
I think sleeveless, I might like it more. So, and I think I might wear it more as well. So I'm gonna try that and see what I think. Okay, so first of all, let's look at knit tops in the tops category. So I only have two knit tops with me in the summer category. Um, yeah, I do a lot of woven tops. I never even realized that. So I have this Durango. This was my first Durango. It was made as a wearable muslin and I've used it a ton. I've got a bit of a gather in my um, neckline here. Uh, I did the bias binding improperly. It's starting to fall apart a little bit here and there. That said, this is so comfortable. <laughs> and maybe I just need to, this was the original, so it has the line down the back. If you remember the dress that I did out of this pattern, I took that out so it was a little bit wider. This is definitely racer back. So if you were wearing this with a bra, you definitely want a racer back bra. I think I need to make a racer back bra actually, or order one, one or the other. Um, so I have this. And then the only other thing I have is this, which is a t-shirt, oops, this way, a t-shirt that I cloned from a favorite J. Crew long sleeve cotton and linen tee. Um, and again, I kind of did this as a muslin. I've left the bottom raw. I wear this a ton as well, hence why it's with me, right? I mean, I only brought things with me that I thought I was gonna wear a lot. Um, I like the bound neckline that I copied from the original on this and it's really comfortable. So I think, I think I've said this before that I need to do some knits. Woven sleeveless tops. I have this one that I was wearing yesterday. This is the top of the Jenna jumpsuit from Cotton and Chalk. This is a, called the Boro Woven. Oops. I have such a makeshift setup here that if I knock it in any way, <laughs> it's hilarious. Okay. This is, I remember buying this fabric for my birthday last year or Mother's Day at the workroom in Toronto. This is the Boro Wovens is the name of the fabric. And I just did this little cross top. Oops, need to, need to um, press it a little more. Again, breezy, open, airy, um, soft, all things that I like. Simple, clean, neutral, happy, happy. And then I have two tops that I made from a J. Crew shell that I have two copies of from back in the day and I took a pattern from them. So here's one. This was a remnant from Blackbird Fabrics. And the reason why I love this shell is because, and the reason why I copied it is because when I was first sewing and I didn't know how to do buttons and I didn't know how to do zippers, <laughs> I loved something that I could just throw over my head and I didn't need any closures. So that's the case with this. In this case, I did the full length and I did a split hem and I bound it in a contrast binding. Um, I love a I love a sleeveless top that comes right out to the shoulder cap. It gives me more coverage. Um, I don't like getting too much sun, even though it's sort of inevitable, but I try not to. And I like the cut down uh, underarm because I really don't like things pushing against me. I also think it shortens the life of your garment if you're getting deodorant and sweat over it all the time in the summer. So this I wear a ton. Um, now it's fine, but it did leak a fair amount of dye when I was first wearing it. And I wore it with like, I wore it with a white skirt and like the top of it all got the red dye on it. And I was like, no, anyway, it's fine. But this is great. And then I have another version of the same thing in Nanny Eero. And this is the, um, this is the Bo Yin Yang series that she did. And the original has the V-neck. That one there, I just cut to a crew neck, but this one does have the V-neck. I made it similar time, probably within a month of leaving, because I'm using the same fabric here for the binding. And I used the selvage on this because I just love the selvage. Uh, this has been washed a bunch. You know, like you need to press out the selvage every time you wash it, because it does kind of wrinkle in a different way but I, I kind of like that and I love the double gauze. I actually have, I got this out of um, half a meter. So I bought half a meter of the Nanny Era double gauze and I got this out of it. I just squeaked it out. I did match a few of this because it's not the same pattern. Well, you know, it's not a consistent pattern. I could only really match a few of the stripes going down the side, but I figured that was good enough and this gets worn a ton. Again, double gauze, I'm generally able to wear without a bra, which for me is ideal in the summer when I'm hot and sticky. In the slightly longer sleeve category, 
we have this one that I made recently and this is from a free pattern from the Love Sewing magazine. This was the peachy keen top, I think they called it. And it has um, uh, cuffs and it has a button placket. These are the buttons that the lady in my choir gave to me. They're so cute. Um, again, like I know quilting cotton is not great for most garments, but this was really lovely to wear. It's lovely against the skin. It's really breezy. Um, I think when I wore it in the video, I wore it with the buttons undone, but now I find I'm wearing it more with the buttons done up. And yeah, I think it's really, really cute. This is my Pinnacle Top by Paper Cut Patterns. And this is made from a fabric that I got from the Textile Museum of Canada. Um, I think it's mostly, I think it is probably just linen, cotton linen. I do think that it's all natural fibers. It does crash quite a bit. This pattern is really interesting. You just need a lot of fabric. Be, unless you decide to, to not have this one big piece that goes all the way here and all the way back. Um, I also find it a little bit short in the front. Like I actually only turned this over one time because it was quite short on me in the front. Um, unless I pulled it way down in the front, er, way down at, at the, the V, do you know what I mean? So um, I do wear this. Sometimes I put a tank top under it. Um, it's very comfortable. I like the red. I would definitely make another one. I think what I would do is I would make the same size, but I would somehow lengthen the front by about an inch. And then I have this beautiful caftan top that I made last year using the class on Creative Bug by Liesl Gibson. I highly recommend it. It's fantastic. I'll, I'll link it for you below. Um, very, very easy. So in this case, I used a tablecloth that I thrifted and I just love this design. And I somehow managed to completely do the whole caftan without, oops, 10%, talk fast, without having to cut out any of these beautiful, I, I'm sure they were done by hand. I'm sure they were done by hand designs. So this does have kind of a rounded, you, you take a, a plate and you do a rounded armhole. And other than that, I kept it really simple. There's supposed to be a drawstring on there, but I felt like it wasn't gonna be long enough. And so it's just nice and breezy and flowy. Um, I loved wearing it in Mexico. It did kind of have a Mexican feel to it. And uh, even though I was worried that maybe it would be hot because it is quite a heavy material, it's not, it's lovely. And yeah, so I'm sure I'll get wear to this. And then lastly, I have my two Roscoe blouses. So Roscoe by True Bias, very popular pattern. I've made two. This is the first one. This is using a fabric by um, Anna Maria Horner. And I love it because these are little fringy edges. So all over are these little fringed edges. It's very light, it's pretty see-through. Um, I'll wear like a tank top or something underneath it or a cami, although I don't really wear camis, but I wear tank tops. Um, yeah, super cute. The only thing with this first one is I found that the sleeves for me were a little too short and a little too snug. So on the second one, which is this one right here, also from my birthday Mother's Day haul that I did before I left Toronto at the workroom in Toronto. I lengthened the sleeves, I believe by two inches, and I also made the wristband a little bit wider. This is the wristband that I copied when I did my Darling Ranges dress and measured it to make sure because I like this style. So again, this gets a ton of wear, a ton. Um, it goes with pretty much everything that I have. If it's cool in the morning, I put it on. If it's a little bit windy, if I don't want to get extra sun, it's cool enough, but it's still got some protection. So yeah, these get a ton of wear. All right, and lastly, we have pants and skirts. So second to lastly. Here's the first skirt and this here, let me hold it up properly. This is the Patty Pocket Skirt by Amy Nicole. And I made this probably two years ago now two summers ago and her patterns are great. I love the way her instructions are. Um, I did size size it down. I think next time I would choose my size by my waist. I kind of used a combination of the two and ended up with something way too big for my waist. But I love this big indentation, these beautiful big pockets. Again, this goes with anything. This very light jersey kind of, it's not a chambray, it's a light, light jersey. Um, also came from Blackbird Fabrics, and it also has these cute pleats in the back, invisible zipper on the side. This is probably one of my first invisible zippers, not super invisible. <laughs> what are you gonna do? 
you live and you learn, right? So there we go. And I, I really love this. I recently took this and redid the hem because the hem was falling. And so I mended it just a little while ago and redid the hem. So it's all ready to wear for spring. This always gets a ton of wear. It's very, very comfortable. And then I have this denim skirt from the Stitch Sisters uh, using their tutorial, which I'll link below. I love this skirt. I This took, took no time at all. I used a pair of jeans that are slightly too small for me that I could do them up, but they were maybe a little tight in the bum and the, and the hips. And so this is great because when you turn into a skirt, you get a little extra room and you also get a little more room because you can kind of move it up and down on your waist. So if it's a little tight on the waist, you know, if it's close enough, um, it'll work with this. So I wore this a ton. As a matter of fact, I had to mend it because it was starting to, it was starting to wear through at the back. So I wear this a lot. I decided to leave it with a fringed edge. I just zipped it across here so that it could only fray so much. And yeah, I think I'm gonna stick with that. I like it, gets lots of wear. And then my last skirt is also a denim skirt. And this I made recently, this is my Erin skirt. It's got a little polka dot lining on the pocket. These are buttons that I stole from a thrifted cardigan that I have. Um, also very cute. I am definitely tempted to do one of these in beige, in the uh, cream um, cotton twill that I have there that I showed you guys the other day. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I may size down one. I'm gonna try this on again and see how I feel, but I feel like it could go down one. I generally wear it with this bottom bottom button just open, just to give, give yourself a little bit of a vent, a little bit of space. I suppose I could do a smaller size and, and vent it on the side if I really wanted to, but this turned out great, really, really well, so I don't see why I wouldn't make another. And then lastly, pants, slacks. So I have the one pair that I showed you guys, the blue stripe from the beginning. I have these, oh my gosh, I can't tell you how much I love these. These culottes are the bottom half of the Vogue 9075 jumpsuit. And I've made the jumpsuit once and ha only wore it a handful of times because it wasn't really a daily wear kind of jumpsuit. I can't even tell you how many times I've worn this. <laughs> I used the, the lower half of that pattern and then I used the Winslow culottes flat front elastic back tutorial from Helen's Closet and I'll link that below um, to draft a waistband and have it flat at the front because I prefer that and then elasticated at the back. It has pockets. This is a hemp fabric. It is so so breezy and beautiful. I love it. I wear these constantly they are just the most like grab it throw it on i can kind of not dress them up but like they could they could go to a beach party just as well as they could just hang around the house in the morning and you know clean the kitchen or whatever so really really comfortable those get a ton of wear and then the only other pair of summer pants i have are these ones that i think i showed you guys the other day and these are the fez pants this is made out of beautiful, beautiful suiting that came from Michelle of Simone's Rose. When she left Toronto, I bought a bunch of her fabric and um, I did mend these. So the waistband was a little odd. It was not quite well done and I'd forgot to interface the waistband. And so last week when it was pouring rain and I was just doing a lot of slow sewing, I unpicked and removed the um, waistband. I interfaced it and then I stitched it back on again. And then I also fixed here, because here for some reason you could see the elastic coming through. It was just a very odd, I feel like the instructions, either I didn't get them or they weren't very good because all three sets that I have have that problem where you can see the elastic, so odd. And then I, I drafted this little pocket because <laughs> it doesn't come with pockets. Um, and so I drafted this little pocket that I can fit just my phone in, which has my, credit card and stuff already in it and that's generally all I really need to go out with. Um, these are light and lovely and they do not crush. Um, I have more of this fabric at home and I wish I could teleport home and get that as well as see all my friends and family. Of course, my sister who's probably watching. Hi, hell. <laughs> um, but other than that, uh, I would love to pick up the rest of this fabric and make a match set for this as well. All right, that is it. I think that I have covered all of the me maids for spring and summer that I brought with me. And I have a beautiful wardrobe to choose from. Um, I'm actually really enjoying coming up here in the morning. I've put everything on this rail here that came um, in the apartment. 
and it's lovely to see all my new maids you know there I have more color than I thought I have more pattern than I thought I thought I was you know more of a neutrals person and I think for quite a while I've been like oh I'm too neutral I need to add in more color and now I've ended up with all this color and pattern but all color and pattern that I love and all in the colors that I love and yeah so I don't know what I'm gonna be making next to be honest I haven't even started on the plans that I told you guys about two days ago because I've been doing this and I've been kind of pressing stuff and fixing stuff little bits and bobs here and there I also made six masks that I had to get done so tomorrow if you come back I'm giving away multiple copies I can't even tell you how many multiple copies of the Bathurst top if you enjoyed that oh the Bathurst top I didn't show you that <laughs> okay I'm gonna put in a picture because I just showed it to you two days ago the Bathurst top is the other thing that I have and that's in double gauze and it's super comfy um definitely making another one of those in linen really really soon so come back tomorrow on my birthday and I will be giving away a bunch of copies of that pattern as well as a 50 pound gift certificate to Minerva if you guys want some fabric for spring and summer sewing come on back please like and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you tomorrow all right I will talk to you guys soon bye bye